I'm Dusty Brown, known to most of you. My real name was Myron Brown. I was named after my uncle, Myron Derek Wilson. As you can tell, most of you probably didn't realize his real name was Myron or mine, because neither one of us liked it, so we used <laughs> other names. But I wanted to fill you in on a little bit of the background of the roller rink and why it was built. Derek and Judy met at Madison Lake Roller Rink. Um, they met there and eventually ended up getting married. As a result of meeting there, they were both good skaters. Well, when they had Michelle, Michelle had a skating party one day. At school, she come home and they needed chaperones. The skating party was held at Burlington Flats Roller Rink. And Judy volunteered to be a chaperone. Well, before they went, Derek decided he would go too. And they went over to Burlington Flats and the kids were amazed when they see how good Derek Judy, <laughs> excuse me, could skate. So from that day on, they got home and Judy's like, man, we should build a roller rink. And Derek's like, you're crazy, you know? And Judy kept following up on it and looking into this, looking into that. And next thing you know, they were building a roller rink. That's how the Red Barn got started. The rink opened in July of 1974 and closed in June of 1996. I worked there the first three years until I went in the Marine Corps. As a lot of family members of Derek's, we all pitched in and helped. Most of us, we didn't get have a paycheck the first year or two. We were just trying to help them get the business off and be successful. And it was very busy. I mean, and then after that, in 77, I left for the Marine Corps, come back in 81, and Derek and Judy were so successful, they decided to build the Roller Blue Rink in Norwich. But they had a problem. Who's gonna run the Red Barn? Well, I was in California my last year of my enlistment, and it asked me if I would consider it. After a lot of thought, because I eventually thought that I was gonna be a 20-year man in the Marine Corps, I decided to come home and run the Red Barn. And I did, and uh, Judy would call me every night from Roller Blue, how many skaters you got? And I'd say, oh, and I'd tell her, and she'd be like, damn you. She goes, you got more skaters than we do. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny because the Red Barn basically was paying the bills at Roller Blue. I mean, the Roller Blue was a beautiful rink, a bigger rink, um, but for some reason it just didn't have the popularity in that area that the Red Barn had here in Irville, or the character. And probably a lot of that was due to it being smaller and everyone being friends with each other. So eventually the Roller Blue went out of business, and um, the Red Barn was thriving. The first thing I did after uh, taking it over in 81 is I did away with smoking that was a big I, I never could stand but we did continue smoking for adults only on adult night Sunday nights but we did that and then I I had skated when I was in the Marines down in Camp Lejeune North Carolina at a rink in Wilmington North Carolina and they had a skate and dance first one I'd ever seen and it went over so big I'm like when I get home, I'm going to suggest this to Derek and Judy. Well, when I took the rink over, I decided now's the time. We were getting good crowds to try it. And I knew the Bruce Beetle band because I'd seen them play several places, and they were an excellent dance band. So I scheduled them for a skate and dance. And I can remember the night I was at the house with Derek and Judy, and I was explaining to them <laughs> what I did. They both had blank looks on their faces. They like they, they didn't like this idea at all. I says, "Look, we're gonna skate six to nine. Everyone shed their skates and shoes, and it'll be a, they can only go on the skate floor in their socks, and the band will play nine to one." Well, they were really uh, they didn't know what to think, you know, and I think they kind of wished I hadn't went ahead and planned it. Well, we had over 400 people that night went over excellent and uh, after that I had skate and dances once a month and it was a huge uh, income and help to the rink and keeping the rink going 
to make up for the slow nights, but it just, the kids had so much fun. And besides that, they polished the skating floor for me. <laughs> so, but years went on and uh, it come to a point where I was working three jobs. I didn't feel good. And uh, I told Derek and Judy that I thought I needed to quit. I, was, I would run the rink from 7.30 to 11 at night. I'd leave there. I'd go to um, Colgate University. I worked as a campus safety officer. I would work midnight to 8 at the college. And then Saturday mornings, I would go from there at 8 in the morning and work at Hamilton Post Office. And I'd work there as a rural carrier, and I'd get done there about 3 in the afternoon. I'd have to boogie back to the rink, get it clean for the night session, run the night session, back to Colgate, and then in the morning I'd have to go back because Sundays we had an afternoon session at the rink. I'd have to get cleaned up and ready for the afternoon session, and then we'd clean, then it was the night session, adult night. So on the weekends I was lucky if I got a couple hours sleep. But it was all worth it. Um, but I just got to the point where I was not feeling well, overstressed, so I left the rink for a little bit under a year, and they had one of the people from the Norwich rink come up and run it. Well, it didn't do well. I mean, the kids just didn't care for them, and the crowds dropped way off, and Derek and Judy were, you know, they were hurting because the rink wasn't bringing the income in. So after three months, I found out the reason I wasn't feeling well was because I had a 90% blockage of the main arteries to my heart. So I went and got that taken care of, and a few months later started feeling good, and I knew the rink wasn't doing well, and I had a talk with Eric and Judy. I told them I'd be willing to come back. So I did. And the first week I was gonna come back and take the rink over, I put an ad in the penny saver. Dusty's back, sore the good times, at the Red Barn Roller Rink. Had over 400 people the first session. Yeah, that was a great feeling. But just to know that so many people enjoyed that rink. It just, uh, it was heartwarming to know that, and that I had something to do with it. Um, but anyways, we continued on, and up until 1996, when Derek and Judy lost interest and had other things happen in their personal life, that they decided to sell the rink. Um, I couldn't afford it. I didn't. Uh, didn't feel with my home as putting it up for collateral. I just, there was no way I could afford the rink. It was something that was beyond me. And unfortunately it sold and it was uh, sold to an auction company. We all know Reifenberg's ran an auction house there for years until they sold it and then it became a church. Um, so it was, it was tough. It was tough for me leaving. Um, it was hard to walk out that door. The last, uh, last session. But I'm glad that so many people enjoyed it for 22 years and that I was a part of it. I just can't thank all of you enough for all the kind words. Thank you. Sorry, Rick. No. It just it meant a lot more than people know. It touched a lot of people. Thank <laughs> you.
Is there any questions you can think of you wanted to ask me, Rick, about it for the video? Or What's your best memory of the building? Best memory? From the you know, time you took over to the time that it closed. Well, my best memory, I guess, would be the first skate and dance. Being uh, so successful, and the kids have it. It was just, it was unbelievable how much fun everyone had. Um, the funniest was, uh, <laughs> and this didn't have nothing to do with the kids coming there and stuff. Is every summer we'd close in July, except it was the slowest month. Do the floor. Well, for a week. I'd be out there 12, 14 hour days sanding in that skating floor. And then I'd have to mark all the lines back out. Well, we used a leather die. That's how we marked the floors on a little dauber. And we had a, in the center, we measured and we had a, a long piece of wood for the diameter of the circle. And we'd put the nail in the center of the hole in the floor. And then we had a little notch cut out in the end of that. And I'd have to go around there pulling that with a die, with that dabber to make those circles. And then do all of the ends, circles, and the long lines, you know. And that could be a challenge yeah. because that leather die, you made a mistake. That's it. That's it. You're done because <laughs> that, that's there. And well, then the funniest part was when Derek would come down when we go to put the roll on on the sealer. Because we would start at one end and we always had two of us. The first and one person would go around with like a four inch brush and go around the edges. And then we had a big wide roller on the end of a cue stick. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd roll it. Yeah. Like what we did is we took a sprinkler bucket and we drilled the holes out bigger with like an eighth inch bit. And we'd put the roll on in that sprinkler bucket. And one person would go like this and roll and go across one width and then the other person come behind with the roller and roll it out. And we'd each do a couple rows and then we'd switch. We'd alternate. Well that shit was toxic and yeah. because we couldn't we didn't want we didn't want animals yeah but we didn't want animals and stuff or bugs getting in the roll on so we would uh couldn't have the doors open. Well shit by the time we got to the end we were so friggin' silly <laughs> laughing and, and slipping and falling in the roll on and <laughs> it was hilarious yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it was crazy it was funny oh Derek's like god damn good thing the kids aren't in here seeing us like this and stuff <laughs> they think we were smoking dope or something you know oh but that that was the funniest thing I remember the first pair of skates dad bought me for, to, to have the red butter wooden wheels yeah. Remember those? Tom had those. Heck, Justin had a pair of skates with steel wheels on them. Clamp-ons. He clamped on your shoe, his first pair. Yeah, we put... Uh, oh, I remember those. Mine yeah. all tripped out with lights. In backyard. Yeah. 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 Cause there's that little washer and then the screw goes in for your front stopper. You're right, right. But we didn't realize the washer wasn't there. So I'd come around the floor, go yeah. backwards, hit the brakes, fall flat on my face. Yeah, yeah. bolt, bolt sticking out, the gouged right in the floor. I was like, Jesus Christ, bring those goddamn skates. Yeah. <laughs> so he changed them out to the little, the little black ones, which I like. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, that's great. Aren't you the one that, where, yeah, what's you? We're skating along, this little rubber thing goes down, and Jamie's like, what's that? And he turns around and stops. It's my wheel. <laughs> oh, no, my wheel came off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had people, wheels come off before. And I'd say, uh, were you working on your skates? Because when I worked on the skates, I always made sure I put lock nuts on. Yeah. So that wouldn't happen, so no one would get hurt. The vital nut. But yeah, I'd know when the kids went home and worked on their own skates, because something like that would happen, or they'd bring them in.
Um, Justin Brown, I'm Dusty's oldest son, and things that I remember about the rink are just how much fun it was. Um, all the music, um, things that happened behind the scenes, like every month we got excited because we get to go to the mall with Dad, because they would come out with the top ten music every month, and we would go and listen to it, and then we'd get it for the rink if it was something that he wanted played there. Um, I, I don't know how many people knew this, but the, uh, the pickled sausages were the exact same as the pickled eggs, because all we did is once the sausages were gone, we boiled the eggs and put them in there. And mom used to do that. We would use, I don't know, two, three dozen eggs every time. Um, I don't know, just the people. It's a lot of fun. Um, it'd be in it. It'd be interesting to uh, see what actually survives out of that fire. Um, when Dad put the carpet up. I don't know if you remember this. In the men's bathroom, <laughs> in the men's bathroom underneath the blow dryer, when you put that carpet up, <laughs> we all wrote our names. What year you did it? I always wondered if that stuff was still there. I, I guess that's it. I'm glad that so many people enjoyed that for 22 years and that I was a part of it and I just can't thank all of you enough for all the kind words thank you
sister lives in North Carolina and she's a secretary to church guess who walks in the door at the church Dennis Ray oh my God. huggy bear Holy cow. and so the next time I go down there I'm taking my skates and we're gonna go out skating yeah yeah he was he couldn't believe it when I walked in he seen my mom there and stuff and me we went there during the, they put on this Christmas celebration they set up like a thing out in this big field that they own they have all the different stations of the it's basically the birth of christ and it goes through all the different things and they take people out there in hay wagons behind the tractors and you go through the story stop at each station they have microphones and stuff and play you know that little story but that's how we met the night i went down there and him and his wife come over and to it but yeah he's down there Lives right there with my sister and my mom. It's probably the first or second year that we lived because I we bought this house in 05. Vito Bolognone lives over on um, Green Street or whatever you want to call that now. They changed it. Uh, he was running for mayor and he was a part of it wasn't White House yet, but they used the rink as his campaign spot, you know, his meet the greet the candidate night. And we walked in there, me and Connie did, with Damien, our son. And we walked in and it was like, wow. It smelled exactly <laughs> the same. I mean, talk about a yeah. flood of memories. Just yeah. rush your head. Yeah. Just by a smell. Yeah. I mean, well, that, that roll-on was pretty strong you, I mean, stuff. It, it's still and when you skated on it, of course, you were wearing it down a little, so you were bringing, you're raising that smell up out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I just couldn't believe that. They hadn't, it was an auction barn at that point, but they right. hadn't changed anything. Like the yeah. bathrooms were still exact, the, the snack bar, the the rack for yeah. skates was still there. Like, holy shit. But the, you know, a lot the of the light on the wall. <laughs> a lot of those kids have joined the website and stuff. And then, like, Sue Slurts now, she got on there and stuff and I talked with her one night. She goes, Yeah, I still got my skate case. I says, Yep white case with gold stars on it i can remember i could people come in there and i just hand them their skates because yeah. i knew their skate size yeah. topsy turvy trio people got hurt <laughs> keep more used to throw us around like oh that. yeah it was always like me brian johnson and adam palmer or me yeah. and keith or and oh, tom. keith and tom Moore, man the poor girls went out with them their arms were about foot longer <laughs> right? by the time they got done skating with them Sometimes they would lift them, and they'd both lift. The, they'd lift them right off the floor, so their skates weren't even touching when they turn and that. stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. I gotta remember that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Every like year. every once in a great while, those guys would stay after skating nights. I didn't have to go to Colgate. Yeah. Tom and Keith and Billy Parkers was the funniest, and Mike Bollinger and stuff. And we'd play tag, go out there on the floor and play tag. Nice. Well, that friggin' Bill Parkers, he couldn't stop for a lot. He, he would friggin' try to get away from me, and he'd be rolling. He'd lay on the floor and roll across, and his skates are banging and stuff. And or he'd slam into the wall trying to get away because he couldn't stop good and stuff. He was hilarious. He was as funny as that. That's why I put that thing on there with Justin and Nick. I says, get up, Nick. <laughs> Billy Parker's is coming. He can't stop unless he hits something. <laughs> is that circle still on that back wall? The one that Kenny took out when he broke his freaking ankle in? Oh, the Aztec light? That actually came out of Norwich. That and all them spotlights on the end were down in Norwich when that There's rink like closed. Ring that was, on the wire. That was the where wire. all the warriors came in and tied in. Oh, that was all too blooding in those arms. That was all too blooding, and all the wiring come in and tied in and That's inside right. that box. That was a box. It was about that deep. It was a sound act. I could set it up. I could set it up so it was sound activated, or I could run patterns with it and stuff. It's just like the colored spotlights on the end. I could do the same thing with them. We had a separate control where I could control. They go to beat the music and stuff. Oh yeah. I handed him Metallica's Black Album. I said, "Can you play the first song?" Uh, let me listen to it. Yeah. I'm like, "Come on, just try it. Do it without the lights, because it would be really cool." So then all of a sudden, every Friday night. You'd have Better Sandman with no lights on. Go, you know, Ghostbusters was even cool, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, when uh, we had the Carol Canfield band there, yeah. she was short and stout, but an excellent singer. Yeah. Man, she had a voice on her. First time they come, and they played that song, Money, Money. And the kids are all like, hey, get high, get laid, get, get. <laughs> She come off the stage, and she come down to me, and her face is three sheets of red. She goes, I am so sorry. Yeah. I says, Carol, it's not your fault. I says, it's just the kids have made up the words. She says, the first time they said that, she says, I was just going to stop right there. Us and the band were just going to quit playing it because she says, I know you don't let the kids swear and stuff in here you normally. You know, and she just felt so embarrassed with that song when those kids did that. <laughs> I'm glad that so many people enjoyed it for 22 years and that I was a part of it. And I just can't thank all of you enough for all the kind words. Thank you.